So this is my camera slider. But this one is not like any other slider, no no no. This one is overly complicated, with cumbersome controls of course. You know, I feel like I could just call it smart, bluetooth enabled, internet of things, camera slider. With AI of course. And then just ask for 100 million dollars, but that's not what I'm gonna do today. So let me just show you what it actually does. You know, it's just belt-driven slider with a step promoter. It's controlled with this knob and these buttons. It has a nice OLED screen, and it's actually the software that took me the longest to make. So there are basically two modes it can be controlled in. Let's start with the automatic mode. And before I do anything, it's always a good idea to home it first, so that it knows where the camera is in space. And now I can simply hit play, and it will move. I can adjust the speed and direction, even when it's moving. And on top of that, it will stop automatically whenever it hits either end, and it will also change the direction. So that's pretty convenient. That's pretty much everything for this mode, so let's move to the manual mode now. And can we just appreciate the animation for a second? I mean, it's, it's lame, but I love it. Okay, so in this manual mode, the controls are even simpler. You hit play, and depending on which direction you rotate the knob, the slider will move in the same direction. The faster you rotate, the faster it goes. If you let go, it will slowly stop. The only thing you can actually change here is the amount of push each click of the knob will provide. I left the direction button here as well, but it doesn't really do anything. I know, great design, right? So this entire mode is kind of supposed to simulate manual slider, but I don't really find myself using it that much. There is a bit more to the software, and these buttons aren't even used at the moment, but I'll talk about it at the end of the video. One interesting thing is powering the slider. I can either use a regular power bank or a LiPo battery that I actually had to steal from my coil gun, which I keep by my bed like any other sane person would do. Anyway, I basically have this connector right here. Um, all it needs is 5 and 12 volts and I can hot swap these batteries like this. Obviously, there has to be a converter on each one, but those are just details. One detail that I overlooked, however, was using the incorrect connector. I should have used this one and not this one, and of course I managed to shift the connector by just one pin, but that put 12 volts on the 5 volt rail, and I had to replace pretty much everything. Of course, I didn't have the same Arduino, so I ended up with this monstrosity. Uh, you know, for now it's okay, I'm waiting for the Arduino, and once it arrives, I won't install it, because why would I do that? I mean, it works, and that's good enough for me. Also, the battery being on this side actually makes the slider quite well balanced.
Remember when I said that the electronics is what makes this uh, slider special? Uh, well, that's kind of lie, it's more the software, <laughs> because the electronics is pretty basic. It's just an Arduino Pro Micro, uh, just a standard A4988 stepper driver and the OLED screen. I had to use Arduino Pro Micro because it has 80 Mega 32U4, unlike regular Arduino, which has the 80 Mega 328, and the difference between those being half a kilobyte of memory. It's not much, but it's certainly enough. And before you start shitting on me and how poorly I programmed it to use the entire memory, I just want to point out that it's actually the graphics library for the OLED that uses vast majority of the memory. So, you know, I am a shitty programmer, but come on, I'm not that bad. The Rover Encoder is one that I built in one of my previous videos, so love it or hate it, I like it, so I'm gonna keep using it. I have also included this external input in the design, it's just connected directly to one of the pins of the Arduino. It doesn't do anything at the moment, but I will add some functionality later, maybe? I was thinking about connecting it to a 3D printer, so that it moves uh, with the bed of the printer, and that would make it easier to film time lapses. But I don't know, it was just an idea. The whole case kind of slides in place. <laughs> Get it? Slides because it's slider. I'm sorry, I, I didn't design this just for this bad joke. Um, where was I again? Yeah. So I've also included the home switch in the case as well. And I just kind of like that it's all in one case. You know, nothing coming out of it. That's pretty neat. But none of this really explains what this is or why these buttons are here as they are not really being used, or even the fact that the program actually fits on regular Arduino. The truth is that I started this project with a little bit different idea. Let me show you the original program. So in this program you can actually draw points in space. They are automatically connected, so the plus and minus buttons they add and remove points. You can, you can move around with the encoder and with this weird switch you select whether you move horizontally or vertically that's why it looks so weird you know i think the idea of the switch is pretty neat uh, but didn't turn out as great as i was hoping to okay but what do these points actually mean well the x-axis represents the position of the slider in space and the y-axis represents speed so a straight line like this would mean that this slider is going to move at a constant speed. Slope down would mean that it would slow down. Slow up would be speeding up, etc. So the idea was that you would draw the movements first, then you would set time for the entire sequence, and this time could be anywhere from 3 seconds to 24 hours, then you just start it and it goes. This was meant primarily for time lapses, or for me personally, because I usually film alone and sometimes I need the slider to move at different speeds, so this is why I designed like this, but I never managed to actually make it work. I will try to work on this in my free time, because I really want to get this finished, but if any of you maybe want to try it as well, I will upload this version of the software as well, uh, with some notes. Uh, also let me know in the comments whether I should start uploading to GitHub, I don't know how well Arduino and GitHub go together. Now when it comes to the current software that I'm using and your own implementation, there is really just one thing that you should care about, and that is the number of steps variable, which defines how many steps it takes from one end of the slider to the other, and basically it just defines the length of your slider. You will have to figure it out on your own, it's really not that difficult, sorry. Uh, if you want any more customization, you can do that. Uh, you can change the input pins right here, so you can change all of them except for 0, 1 and 9. It's written right there in case you can't read that, because they are special pins, special... Uh, it, it's not like they are retarded or something, like they are special pins. You might also have to adjust the max speed, which is basically the highest speed the slider can physically travel. Uh, just keep in mind that the lower the number is, the faster it goes, because it actually represents the time between each step. Next is the min speed, uh, which as the name suggests is the minimum speed, but this is the minimum speed only for the automatic mode, so this doesn't, this doesn't affect anything in the manual mode. And lastly, you might have to adjust the 
creatively named ultra low speed and I know I'm very good with naming stuff this speed is only in the manual mode and it's basically the speed of the slider where it's going so slow that it just stops completely that about wraps it up uh, if you have any idea about what I should build next please let me know in the comments or on my Twitter I'd love to hear that now go out and make something